The first page of chapter 10, in fact the first paragraph, does an excellent job of articulating the theme of this book. Take a minute, reread it, make sure that you really understand it before you go forward. I'll summarize this part of the book for you, but it's silly and funny and I think you'll really enjoy it. But while you're doing it, I want you to remember that the story is an allegory and I want you to remember that the story is really trying to teach you something about what it means to be a human being. Italo Calvino has an idea about what it means to be whole and to be wise. And so those are the most important ideas to get as you finish this book. It's a philosophical thing. He's teaching you about what it means to be a human being. My favorite part of the chapter is, of course, Pamela. She's hilarious. I like how she makes wedding dresses for her goat and for her duck, but I also notice that on a symbolic level, she belongs in the natural world. She's part of nature. And when things go wrong at the wedding, that's where she goes back to. Now, when you were in middle school, somebody taught you about conflict. You know, there's different kinds of conflict in different stories. There's person versus person, there's person versus society, there's person versus... But in this story, the two halves of the Cloven Viscount are fighting against each other. But isn't that person versus self? It is. It kind of. And also not. That's why this story is a fantasy. Okay, so there's a big duel, and... The Cloven Viscount gets into a fight with himself, and it's Dr. Trelawney who saves him and puts him back together. But I really want you to understand what that means on a symbolic level. When Dr. Trelawney is saying he's healed, that's the climax of the story. Um, and Pamela is excited about this too. She says, at last I'll have a husband with everything complete. I'm going to leave it to you to interpret the last two pages of the story, but I do think they're the most important pages. You know, this has always been the story of this little narrator. Um, he's the one telling the story, and he's the one who I've always told you to watch. So what is it that happens in the last two pages that lets us know something really important about this narrator? Okay, we're done with the book. I hope you enjoyed this story as much as I did. The next time we have class, I'm giving you a test. If you want to know what to study, go back over the last four chapters.